Hi guys, welcome to Element 14 Presents. I'm Whitney Knitter from Knittronics, and we've got a fun build today. Also, this is my helper, Moxie. Say hi. <laughs> I always have furry help in the lab here. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So this project is a snow globe. A snow globe containing a pair of Hemholtz coils. So for those of you not familiar, Hemholtz coils are a set of coils such as these, and they have some sort of wire such as copper wire wrapped around them. When a current's passed through the wire, it creates a uniform magnetic field in the center of the rings. When I saw this cool little snow globe thing on Adafruit, I thought it'd be fun to put a pair of these inside here with some mineral oil and ferrite shavings and see what this magnetic field looks like. So let me explain my setup. A quick rundown of the materials I'm using for this project. We'll start with the one that kind of sparked this whole project initially, which is this cool snow globe thing I found on Adafruit. It's got a nice little area, cavity, to store your electronics here. I think it's meant for normally a circuit playground. And if you pull this out, you've got the main part of your snow globe here. So I decided this little platform here is where our rings are going to sit. Surprisingly enough, little rigid one inch rings are kind of hard to find with a little lip on them to wrap wire around. So after much pain and searching, because I am an electrical engineer, not a mechanical engineer, I found this really cool little online CAD software called Onshape, to which I used my very limited mechanical engineering skills to create these three pieces. Well, it's actually only two different drawings, the ring drawing and the base drawing. I'll have both of these linked down below. Onshape's pretty cool. It's all online. I can share these publicly. Uh, and if you want to recreate these projects, you can just simply 3D print these mechanical CAD files for yourself. So I've got my first try or my first pass at these rings here. And you can see this is kind of the idea of what we're going for with wrapping the copper wire around. Based upon my calculations, I thought that this ma magnetic field would be strong enough, but after wrapping it up and testing it, the rings were too big compared to the gauge of my magnet wire for there to be really any recognizable magnetic field. Um, I'll pop that uh, equation up on the screen along with my calculations so you can kind of see what I did there. So after my first test here, I went, made my rings smaller and reprinted them. And based upon those calculations, we should get a much more recognizable magnetic field. So we'll see how it turns out. So with those three pieces printed, this, as you've seen, is how we're gonna put it together. We'll set it on our base here, get it super glued down, and then that will let us put our snow globe over it. For the current driver circuit, I did a really quick and dirty current source circuit, which is simply an emitter follower transistor with a Zener diode that should keep our current around 20 milliamps, which is just below the capacity of my magnet wire, which is uh, 0.1 millimeter in diameter. So we'll solder that up. We've got our battery as a power source that will all fit into our cavity here and then in our snow globe. For the ferrite shavings, I went ahead and bought just your plain old ferrite shavings. But then I found this really cool other option, this whole world of nail art that apparently is magnetic nail powder. What you're supposed to do with this is paint on over a base coat and then use a magnet to pull it into some sort of cool design. I figured it'd be cool to throw in, um, throw these into our snow globe and see how it makes it pretty. <laughs> and then of course our snow globe juice is mineral oil. I chose this for its non-conductive properties and also the oil I thought it would have the most cool snow globe effect as far as its viscosity being an oil. Let's get started assembling this. I'm gonna start with wrapping the copper wire around the rings for our coils. So let's get started. Are you ready to help me, Moxie? So we need to leave a little bit of space 
space to thread them down. About six inches would be probably enough. The hardest part is getting it started. Once you get it started. Moxie, I don't need your help with this. There are about 12 meters on each spool here. Uh, the 12 meters, I think if I remember my calculations off the top of my head, equates to on this one and a half inch diameter, about 144 turns. Those calculations are relevant because that does um, overall factor into the calculation of the strength of the magnetic field. It is important if you're recreating this to make sure you, if you don't follow my exact um, material specifications, make sure you redo your calculations to know because that type of thing, like the amount of the number of turns on each coil, the diameter of the wire, the amount of current being passed through it, that will all affect the overall strength of the resultant magnetic field coming out of these guys. What becomes cool is the uniformness of the magnetic field between the two coils when they're placed, um, their radius width apart. So this is a one and a half inch diameter uh, ring. So when we place them three quarters of an inch apart, we'll see this cool little sphere of a magnetic field in between the two, or at least that's the theory if everything works appropriately. All right, so now I need to attach these. So I'm just gonna put a dot of super glue down on each end here. So it is important to note that this is, since it's an inductor in the circuit, you don't want to twist these, the ends together, uh, cause you've got your current passing through, coming in on one coil and coming out the other. So if you twist them together at the end, you'll short them together. It is also important to note that there is an enamel coating on this copper wire, even though it looks bare, um, just to keep it insulated in that way. So when you're shopping for the wire, it's important, it'll be called magnet wire, which denotes that it has that enamel coating on it. I stuck my fingers together last time on the first set of coils. It was not fun. There's probably a better way to secure this wire onto the spool rather than super gluing it, but I'll save that for version two. I did buy two of everything, at least. So let's take a look at the very simple current driver circuit that I put together to drive our coils in the snow globe. This is a Zener voltage stabilizer. So looking at the circuit, we've got our voltage source here, which is our 3.7 volt battery. And then we create a voltage divider between this resistor R3 and our Zener diode D3. The voltage drop across the Zener is kept the constant due to its properties when reverse bias, which is also going to be the voltage drop across R4 here. The constant voltage drop, therefore constant current running through R4 will be the same current running through the collector of our BJT transistor here. So I've got our coils modeled here, L1, R1 for coil one, and then L2, R2, which is the electrical model of coil two and then our two shock key diodes, which are our flyback diodes. So when we remove the voltage source or remove power, the collapsing field that creates a reverse current doesn't damage the rest of our circuit and therefore our battery, which is our shock key diodes here, a D1 and D2. I went into KiCad and recreated our circuit here. So we've got our battery connector terminal here. And then I just have a row of headers that will be connecting our coils to and our two flyback diodes here, which then I just made an, a cute little round PCB that is the same, but a little bit smaller diameter as the bottom of our reservoir in the snow globe. And you can kind of see what this layout looks like here. So it's a simple little circuit, sweet and to the point. It is worth noting that this is vulnerable to temperature, so don't let this circuit get too hot. There are ways to make this a little bit more resilient to temperature, but again, we'll save that for a V2. Okay, so we've wrapped the coils. I've walked through my driver circuit. Now it's time to get it all soldered up. Funnily enough, I don't know what happened to my finer solder. So I've got a bunch of solder flux and we're gonna hope for the best here. Oh, cat lady problems. <laughs> all 
All right, so we've got our Zener transistor and our resistors on. So we're gonna put our battery connector on next. So we just have our flyback diodes left here. When you look at the package, you've got a stripe on one side, which is the cathode side, which if I've got my board turned this way, you are going to go like that. So that's what we've got so far. And then we've got our short little female header we're gonna put on here. We've got some pins we're gonna wrap the wire around to connect the coils to our circuit here. All right, and we've got our circuit ready to go. Let's move on to the next step. We need to thread them through our base before we connect them to. So the plan is with the coils, I've got my male header here, as you can see. So I'm going to wrap the end of the coils around the top of the male header, put a blob of solder on them so that they can connect here into the top of the circuit board, but obviously they need to be threaded through this guy first. I'm just gonna try to center the base here. There we go. So I've got my base uh, lined up there, drawn out my four holes for a wire. I'm kind of amazed I haven't super glued my fingers together yet. I've got the base secured on there and now we are threading the wire through for the coils. So as you saw, I just made a couple little holes with the X-Acto knife. And then I, since the wire's thin enough, a little, I'm just using a little sewing needle to pull the wire through here. All right, so we've got it threaded there. I think I'm gonna thread the other coil through before securing the first one. That's probably a good idea since the base is kind of flexible here and potentially I've already popped the base off accidentally once. And as you can see there, I've got everything threaded through. I'm trying to get some super glue up the sides of the base here. I did design these to be a somewhat snug fit on their own without any adhesive, so. All right, I'm securing the other coil here. Well, that was a little bit more painful than I expected, but we've got everything threaded through. So it's been a few minutes and I was letting the super glue on the base dry here and also holding together the rings. So it looks like it's coming out quite nicely there. So I think now I'm going to, because this is flexible and I also poked these holes in it, I'm gonna put some hot glue around the edges here as well as over the top of the holes where the wires are through so that I can just give it a nice good seal. I'm also not totally sure how the mineral oil is gonna react with the super glue. So just a extra layer of glue protection here. Okay, so we're all glued. Definitely not the prettiest glue job, but I care more about no leaks and everything staying together than I do prettiness. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! So we've got our rings fully assembled and drying here. Um, I'm going to let those dry before I put on the male header, connect each leads to the male header. So while that's drying, let's test out our shavings to mineral oil ratio in our globe. I honestly have no sense of reference for this. So let's just do three scoops for now. Let's start with one color from our powders. Oh man, oh, I'm glad I have gloves on because one of these already exploded. Oh, this got real messy real fast. I can't tell exactly what colors they are because there's so much red on the outside of everything. Let's see what the blue one looks like. Sealed for your protection. Well, not sealed very well. I'm gonna do two little scoops of this guy. And ooh, here we go. Take two. <laughs> may have too much powder in there. I think there's definitely too much. Probably only needed like one scoop of ferrite powder. 
Well, I'm gonna wash this out and try again. This time, I'm only going to do one scoop of the ferrite powder because it not only, like there's the big chunks of it, but it seems like it's so dusty that it releases a whole bunch of extra material that clouds up the mineral water pretty fast. And I think I'm gonna go for a brighter color this time. So I'm gonna try this gold yellow color. Well, it looks like the nail powder might have been what was too cloudy last time. As pretty as it is, I think I'm going to have to abandon the nail powder idea. It just never, it's too fine. And any amount of it seems to just completely make the mineral oil opaque where you're not gonna be able to see the rings. I'm not quite as worried about the actual ferrite shaving sinking as fast because theoretically the magnetic field between the rings should catch and suspend the ferrite shavings. So I think we're going to fill up our final ball here and only put the ferrite shavings in it. It's time to solder on the header for the rings to be able to attach it to our electronics board here. So I'm just gonna wrap the wire around the top of this male header and put a glob of solder on there. Cause after much trial and error, this ended up being the most effective way to connect this wire to the board because since this is 38 gauge wire, finding a normal connector for this wire was not easy and not cheap. Okay, so I've got two of them soldered on there. The only thing is you have to be careful when you're soldering to these little headers like this because you can melt the plastic and offset the pin sometimes. So make sure I get my coils on here in the right order. Otherwise the magnetic fields won't be going in the right direction to get the appropriate uniform field in the center. It's turning out to be a little bit tedious. And there we go. We just need to clean up and trim those ends and we are good to go. Okay, so we've got the header installed with both of our coils, so now our coils are connected to our driver circuit. So I just placed a couple little dollops of super glue on the top to secure the excess wire on top of the solder there. Okay, so to test the coils real quick, I was gonna plug in the battery real, and so they don't have any switch on this. When you plug in the battery, it's just on. I have my needle I was using earlier. I'm just gonna see if I can feel the magnetic field after I plug this battery in. I feel some resistance. There's a field there. It's not super strong, but I didn't expect it to be super strong. By my calculations, it's probably about half the strength of a normal kitchen magnet, which given it's 38 gauge wire, the diameter of the coils, that's about what I was expecting. But I also kind of wanted to keep the current requirements really low so I didn't have to get into any fancy circuitry because keeping the max current down to like 20 milliamps made all my circuitry really easy and my power supply, because also keep in mind my power supply had to fit in this little reservoir. So there was a lot of moving parts in this design that make me worry that all this work is, it's not gonna work, but if it doesn't work, I will reassess and we'll just have to make a version two in the future. Now that I know that there's some sort of field there for sure, let's fill up our snow globe and get this final assembly going. Let's start the final assembly here and pray for no catastrophic mineral oil. Explosions. <laughs> Let's pour in our mineral water, or mineral oil. Keep saying mineral water. Oh no. So all in all, the snow globe took about two cups, a little over two cups of mineral oil. It's also worth noting the mineral oil itself, the heavier weight of it, the, the viscosity might also have some impact on the strength required on the magnetic fields part to move the particles. I don't know if glycerin may have been a better choice for this, which is typically what most snow globes used, but we will find out. Try to get this in here, make sure that my wires aren't going to short each other out. I think in the future, if I do a revision too, I should find a better way to 
isolate the wiring here, the little leftover bits from the header. The battery might need to rest on top there. It looks like they're hovering, or I see a few kind of suspended. They don't stay suspended for very long, but they are all sticking to the coils themselves. Not quite as cool as I was expecting, but I can see a few little of them. They're suspended there, and they are sticking to the coils. So I think I either need something with lighter shavings, maybe use glycerin instead of mineral oil, maybe bump up the gauge of wire so I can get a stronger magnetic field, one of the two. Overall, I think it was a success in proof of concept. I can see where I clearly need to improve it to make it look really cool. Um, I definitely think I need to add the thermal protection to the circuit because I can definitely feel it heating up a little bit already. But overall, I'm very excited with it. I think it was a success. A mild success, but a success. While I was hoping you'd actually be able to see the cloud of magnetic field in between the rings and that the actual field would suspend the ferrite shavings there in the middle, I still think this turned out pretty cool. It was still cool to at least see it attached to the rings. I have definite ideas of how to improve this in the future. And now that I've gone through and put this all together, I can see how some of my plans on paper didn't quite turn out in real life. But I'm really excited to uh, go back to the drawing board, do a Rev 2, and build another one of these guys. And if you want to recreate this project for yourself, I'll link all of my AutoCAD files as well as my PCB layout in KiCad. And I'll catch you next time. I'm Whitney, and this is Element 14. Thanks for dropping by.